And now we're in this hustle porn culture yeah. where if you're like not, if your porn. output isn't like insane and you're not grinding 24 seven and staying up all night and pulling all nighters and on your hustle, there's something wrong with you. Right. Um, so for the big story uh, this week, rather than dive into the news headlines, I wanted to seize an opportunity to do something a little bit different. Um, which is riff off a tweet that I saw the other day from my friend, Steve Magnus. Steve's a, a former friend of the pod, been on the podcast twice, co-author with Brad Stolberg of a couple of great books. He's an elite track and field coach, former Oregon project coach, mm. a guy who's been outspoken against doping and Alberto Salazar specifically. Um, and he's just a source of wisdom on Twitter. And he tweeted something that, that stuck with me because it resonates with something I think about a lot. And his tweet goes like this. There's a reason athletes have off seasons. After intense stress, you need time to mentally and physically recover, periodize your life. Know when it's time to grind and when you need to back off and recover. I think it's a simple statement, but I think it's also profound, this idea of periodizing, not just your training, but also your life. Like everything has a season. Yeah. And when I look at you, Adam, I see somebody who's trained for hard things, who's done hard things, but I'm not sure you've ever engaged in a proper training protocol that involved periodization. We've Maybe periodization has come up mm -hmm. from time to time in former roll-ons, but are you familiar with the concept of periodized training? No. You're not at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I haven't, I haven't, you say I've done hard things. I mean, I haven't trained for like ultra distance events or even, you know, like, I mean. But periodization is a tried and true uh, approach to training for any, it doesn't have to be an ultra distance thing. If you're doing Olympic triathlons, if you're training right. for a marathon, if you're training for any kind of physical feat or endurance challenge, Periodization is a way of structuring how you you create your schedule going forward. So okay. let's say you have a year to prepare for a race, yep. a really big race, it's on the calendar. You look at the end date and you're like, okay, that day's coming. Here I am 365 days beforehand. How am I going to best prepare so that on that race day, I'm at my absolute peak to perform to my capabilities? And the way you do that is you break down your training into certain blocks. You have these this build phase and then you back off and then you go a little bit harder and then you back off again and then you increase again. And then maybe you take two weeks of really easy training. Like you build in periods of time mindfully that allow your body to recover. And this can happen quarterly, it can happen monthly, it happens weekly. It happens daily. So there's the macro and the micro that gets built into all of this. Hmm. So that um, you are breaking your body down, but not blind to the fact that you've got to allow your body to build itself back up so that you can then approach your training as a stronger, fitter athlete to, to take it you know, to the next level, to break through certain plateaus. And knowing when to back off and how to back off and for how long to back off is both an art and a science. Yeah. And I've had my best years as an athlete, my best performances when I've really taken periodization to heart and um, followed the direction of my coach, Chris South. When I was a swimmer, there was no periodization. We just went in and we hammered every right. single day. And then we hung you know, all our hopes on a two week taper at the end of the season and just prayed that it all worked out. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. But you were, that and was early, early earlier That was early, this is like 80s. Right, like you know? that, that's what they did then. Right, exactly. Yeah, it was all about but yardage. But now it's like understanding how, how hard you can push before you tip into overtraining and knowing when to back off the gas and allowing your body to recover, knowing how long you need for your body to bounce back and what kind of training you're doing during those, those sort of easier intervals of time um, really becomes this incredible lever for growth and, and performance breakthroughs. So how would you like, if, if you're training for Catalina, I'm, not, I'm most likely not doing the full distance Catalina because I just don't, I can't commit to the time it's gonna take to train for it with a young 
young one, but I'm going to do the sprint, which is 15 K. Mm -hmm. So how would you periodize that? Like when would you start and how would you periodize well, that? Well, first I would break up the period of time into like three phases. The first phase would be a endurance building, like base building period where you're just working on your foundation and you're getting a lot of zone two work in and getting acclimated to spending a lot of time swimming and running mm -hmm. so that your body um, kind of knows what that feels like. You're giving your tendons and your ligaments the opportunity to adapt, not just your lungs and your heart, but all of your muscles in your body to figure out like how to sustain itself over long periods of time. So that phase would be a slow progressive build of going longer and longer and longer, mostly in the zone two phase. But within that block, you're gonna do a little, maybe like a two week build, and then you're gonna have four days that are gonna be pretty easy, or maybe a week that's pretty easy where you're still training, but the gas isn't all the way pressed down, right? You're, you're, you're backing off so that during that, that, that week of training, your body's getting, you're allowing your body to recover and get stronger. And then that would be followed by an, another sub block within the base building block of going a little bit longer than you did in that initial block mm. to push through to the next barrier. And you just repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and pay attention to how your body is recovering during those off periods so that you can better calibrate what those rest weeks look like. Hmm. And then within each week, you have a rest day, right? So, it, and then within each day, you know, you have, when are you training and what are you doing in between, in between your training sessions? So periodization works at every level from yearly to monthly to, you know, weekly to daily. Um, then your second phase would be more of a strength and speed building phase where you're gonna be doing more tempo work interspersed uh -huh. with continuing to increase your volume over zone two, but you're gonna choose moments where you're gonna do, you're, you're gonna have really hard kind of um, zone three, zone four, zone five efforts in there to get used to the idea that you experience when you're doing a swim run, which is that you're always changing gears. You're, right. you're ramping up your heart rate, it's coming back down, it's going back, you're like, it's not like an Ironman or a marathon where you get into, you, you rev up to a certain speed and you hold it as long as you can. A swim right. run, you're constantly, switching back and forth. So it would be more focused on getting your heart and your lungs and your muscles acclimated to heart rate spikes and getting fit enough so that your heart rate comes back down pretty expeditiously. Right. The third phase would, would be race specific. Then you're gonna start sort of training in the spirit of what the race is and trying to mimic what that experience is like. And, and you'll have six week blocks usually? Well, it depends on how much time you have. Okay. You know what I mean? Like you can, I mean, we could spend four hours trying to figure out exactly what to do. And this is an ideal situation. This isn't necessarily, you know, the the protocol for the time crunched dad of a baby who only right. has, you know, who's not going to be able to train every single day. But basically I just wanted to lay that out in the most general terms to help people understand what periodization looks like. Can we build in a period for me to hunch over my computer and type with two fingers? <laughs> yes, you okay. can. There's room for in. all of it. That's what I do between training sessions. But I think the broader point here and, and why I wanted to talk about this, um, you know, given that I've learned a lot about the, the wisdom of periodizing endurance training is that it's so applicable in every other area yes. of life. And it goes back to ancient wisdom. It's like, eat with the seasons, mm -hmm. live by the seasons. Why do I feel so sluggish and tired in, in the colder, darker months? It's because you're hardwired for that, right? Like, well, it so back rather to like than Matt Walker, like the, how we were wired for when the sun went down, we all slept for exactly. like that whole period of time, or right. like close to it, and 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 we've come so far from that, and so that, that there's so many kind of overlays, right? right? And now we're in this hustle porn culture yeah. where if you're like not, if your porn. output isn't like insane and you're not grinding twenty four seven and staying up all night and pulling all nighters and on your hustle there's something wrong with you. Right. Such that when you have a fallow moment and you wanna rest or you're like, I just don't have it today, you feel guilty or you beat yourself up or you have this sense that you're falling behind. And I think that sensibility, that mentality, that mindset is anathema to long-term success. I think we need to understand that we're all built for periods of, of great productivity but if you wanna sustain that over the long period of time, you have to periodize 
that. You have to mm. periodize your career. You have to periodize your creative output. You have to periodize essentially everything that you do. And the more mindful you can be to make sure that you're, that you're incorporating fallow periods to right. coin Bonnie Choi's article, which we're gonna right. talk about. Um, I think, uh, you know, and it, it, it's for a lot of type A personalities, it doesn't feel, it feels indulgent, right? right. Or selfish or unproductive to do that. There's a guilt and there's a shame that gets built into that that's driven by cultural pressures that we need to overcome. And as a 54 year old who's you know been doing stuff for a long time, I can tell you, you can't just be cranking all the time. Now right. you as a content creator, <laughs> you see burnout amidst content well, creators because yeah. they can't sustain the level of output that they're doing and they either mm. flame out or disappear or they have to reinvent themselves and create a way of contributing their creativity in a manner that's more sustainable with 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 lifestyle. It's interesting cuz like two things came to my mind when you told me you wanted to talk about this. The first is when I was when Lonely Planet travel guides were my primary, you know, job when I was mm -hmm. doing that and it was a period of from 2007 to what 2013 where I was gone 8 9 months a year and I would do like 3 of these guides and that that entailed long periods of travel, um, usually in remote areas, um, not always, but usually, um, and then come back either home or I'd rent a place in the country and long periods of just, you know, 12 hour days, Chilling. 10 hour days in the computer and then uh, and mm -hmm. living in situ so I could make calls if I didn't have all my research done, I, I knew where I was. Um, and so that has a built in kind of not fallow cause you're still hustling, but it, it, there is periodization in the research gathering and the writing, mm -hmm. and it was not, it felt natural. And there is that still. Anytime you're on a story, that like when, when writing, when you're trying to come up with something written at the end of it, versus what you're doing with the mics, it's kind of your, it's all one thing. But you, you're you're reporting, but that's different than the writing, where mm -hmm. you can analyze and be kind of create the distance in between and organize it, and you know what you want to say versus the the absorption, which, and the second thing that came to mind was Bonnie's story, which she published in 2019, which I, I sent to you this morning. Mm -hmm. And, and um, because that's what she's talking about is, is creating that space for absorption as a, as a creative person. Um, so that's, that's, what, that's immediately where my mind went. It didn't go to athletics at all for me yeah. because like athletics are just kind of like, something for, just to, to to keep my mind right more than anything my body right but like i don't think of it in terms of any sort of outcomes or optimization and but i immediately went to that point and like wow i don't really have what i used to have there's no like there's no longer that period of, of like three months where i'm just traveling mm -hmm. and absorbing and three months of writing like i don't have that anymore mm -hmm. two months of writing is what it used to be or a month yeah um so it's interesting and i do i did like that rhythm there's something real natural about it yeah, it's, it comes in phases, yeah. right? Just like if you're making a movie, you write the script by yourself or with a friend or whatever yeah. partner, then you shoot the movie, then you edit the movie, then you market the movie. Yeah. All of those are part and parcel of being a filmmaker, but they're all very different disciplines that mm. I suspect for, and and you know, any every filmmaker is gonna excel in different areas of those and maybe doesn't like certain aspects of it, but the switching gears aspect of it probably keeps them fresh, yeah. right? In the same way that if you're a triathlete, you get to switch up the different disciplines of sport that you're pursuing. For me, people are always like, which one do you like the best? And it's like, I like that I get to change all the time and it's mm. not the same thing every single day. But I think on top of that is this idea of, um, you know, to kind of hearken to this idea of, absor of, of absorbing, like that's where, it gets tricky for people. Like, look, a lot of people, they can't, they don't have the luxury of like, I'm gonna kick back and absorb my life. But no. if you're trying to express something, if you're a creative person, you have to live your life in order to have something to say. Yes. You can't just be writing all the time because you're gonna run out of things to write right. about if you're not right. living, right? Right. right? So you have to live your life. You have to have moments of absorption, no matter what your career path or how busy your circumstances may be, what that looks like to you is gonna depend on your circumstances and your you know, particularities of your life, of course. 
But I think just being mindful of that and trying to find ways even within your day in a given day to ruminate or do nothing and not feel guilty about it, right? Right. There's that thing like stand-up comics are people that just don't like to, you know, like the like people that don't like to wake up in the morning, yeah. you know, and like are lazy, like become stand-up comics. And it's like, what does that guy do? Well, he just does nothing. He wakes up at noon and he like goes and gets a sandwich and like wanders around and then does, it's like, what is that person's, you know, right. what's driving that person? But they're overlooking the fact that the brain is working all the time. So there's observation, there's yeah. synthesis, there's absorption, all of those things are occurring and we shouldn't be so quick to judge how a certain human operates. Also, it's funny, we say he's doing nothing or she's doing nothing, but they're being, you know, it's almost like- Right, but you know, we're not allowed to just be. No. That's the, that's the broader point, right. right? I mean, there is a certain element of like, I think you get to a certain point where you have to be able to afford to, to be, but mm. everyone has that. Like, I don't care what your job is, there's going to be pressures to, and we often fill that space of doing nothing with absorbing other people's content. Like most people I think absorb it through television or Netflix or YouTube or whatever. Um, and, you know, myself included. But, uh, you know, what Bonnie is talking about here is, kind of an active not doing. It's 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 going to the park and people watching, it's reading. It's she's not really advocating um re, she's not really advocating vegging on the couch and watching television. No, no, no. So what she it, what she's a, saying she's is she's separating out the fellow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and 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 acknowledging that in this age of distraction yeah. that it's transgressive to do this, right? Yeah, There's yeah. one quote that that I noted that I wanted to read from the piece which is called you're doing something important when you aren't doing anything. We'll link it up in the show notes. But she says, protecting and practicing fallow time is an act of resistance. Mm -hmm. It can make us feel out of step with what the prevailing culture tells us, the 24 seven hamster wheel of work, the constant accessibility and the impatient press of social media, all hasten the anxiety over someone else's judgment. If you aren't visibly producing, you aren't worthy. In this context, taking time to lie dormant feels greedy, even wasteful. And of course, there are often financial concerns. So yeah, this this notion that it's transgressive, that it is an act of resistance, yeah. that you have to push back against culture and your addictive instinct to grab the phone and ameliorate your your, you know, your, your boredom yeah. by filling it with scrolling or whatever it is that you look at yeah. on your phone. It's very difficult. It's never been more difficult to carve out that time, that fallow time, yeah. that time for rumination and quietude. And feeling wasteful, I mean, yeah, that's exactly it. Like, am I wasting time by doing X or Y or whatever? And, and you know, that's one thing that I think uh, adventuring, which I, is what I consider swimming and running these days for me, it's like, it's like these mini adventures that allows me to clear my head in a way that's a fallow time mm -hmm. within a day for me. But it's not though, because I'm still trying to get something done so it really doesn't really qualify as fallow yeah. time. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, it's, it's hard. pushing my son and his like new tricycle is kind of. But I also think time. it's the mindset that you bring to whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. Right. Like you could go out and and go for a walk with your son, mm. and and bring your phone and stare at your phone the whole time, right. or you leave your phone at home and right. you comport yourself like Brogan and go up and talk to people and live in your brain and. You know, kind of allow yourself to mentally meander. Yeah. Did we cover the periodiza periodization well, of your life? Tell me about your life, like periodizing. Like, where are you in your periodization journey? And when's the, what's the I'm most not successful? Great at it. What's the most successful you've ever been at it? Well, one thing I've done is to build in this month every year where I take off, which is new. I've done it twice, but I intend to do that every year. Mm. I think travel for me is a is a is a big aspect of that in terms of rejuvenating me and and exposing me to new people in new places. I find that to be very nourishing. Mm -hmm. um, like your like your like your Big Island. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and when and, I went to when I went Byron. to Australia, yeah, but yeah, yeah. but even you know when pre COVID there'd be speaking things and I would get to go to all these cool places. And yeah. for me, that's that like really reboots my system. So Damn. COVID's been challenging just to be at home and sit with my thoughts. No and I struggle with 
adopting the appropriate healthy mindset around leveraging that appropriately. But I think at the same time, we have to be gentle on ourselves, mm. like, you know, not to, not to kind of um, beat a dead horse, but it's been a really hard year for everybody. Yes. And I think a fallow year for everybody in a way that we wouldn't have chosen or didn't expect. That's true. Um, so being gentle on ourselves, I think is part of that idea of, of periodizing your life. Like this was a fallow year rather than live in regret or frustration or resentment over it while we're still kind of in it, like how can we develop a better, healthier mindset around this experience? How can we learn from it? How can we use it for that kind of internal journey that will help improve our lives as we move forward in other areas? Mm. 